Thank you. May you not lack honor. May this earth yield her increase unto you. Recently, I looked at my mates and I couldn't find my mates among my mates. May that be your story. May the God that lifts people's heads lift your heads. This will be the best year for you. When you learn to honor the person and the office of a prophet, you provoke something. Tonight, I stand to represent all your guest speakers. Covenant Christian Center, you have done well. You're making God proud. The graces upon our heads will fight for you in the days of battle. When you need help most, you will not lack it. In the name of Jesus. You want to lift your two beautiful, prosperous hands above your head and salute the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jehovah himself. He has no equal. There is no one like him. He reigns in the affairs of men. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. These hands shall not be amputated in the name of Jesus. Slap somebody a high five and tell the person meet me at the top. You cannot destroy words, so you better open your mouth and say your own. Meet me at the top. I am not waiting for you. Please be seated in the name of Jesus. One more time, I'm grateful to the Lord for the privilege of being here again this year. If you missed the morning session, I preached on, Oh Lord, please lift my head. You need to get that CD. Because that's what God said he will do this year. And I'm so grateful to the Lord for Pastor Toyin, Pastor T. That's what I call her. And Pastor Boju Ojemade. Can you please celebrate them? Thank you. Only immature speakers jump on anybody's podium and says the spirit is moving now no time to acknowledge anybody let's just sing let's just preach let's just shout let's just mm -mm. it's a sign of immaturity because if they didn't invite you you wouldn't have been able to come so permit me to waste this moment in celebrating the angels in the house pastor Boju and pastor Toy. if you want to be great you better celebrate them you better give God praise for their lives. You better let noise of joy proceed from your tabernacle. Thank you. Thank you. We do not worship men. We worship God, but we honor men. And because you have celebrated them, you will never be disgraced. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. I have one more session after tonight and that's tomorrow morning i was tempted after pastor tony finished to preach the message god gave me for tomorrow but i listened to the holy spirit and i said okay we'll hold it for tomorrow let's do what god has asked us to do tonight when you are asked to preach after pastor tony Rappu, you know he say that's why i'm using style to waste time so that what i will say will just be short a fantastic patriarch in the body of Christ. We give him honor and we thank God for his life. Thank you for blessing us and his very dear wife. I told you in the morning that pastors marry fine, fine girls. We bless God for you. Amen. One more time, I bring you greetings from my husband, Bishop Felix Remy. I did you more. Um, the day God created him, God didn't create any other person. Um, he's very secure and I'm glad that he's my boyfriend of life please celebrate this prophet Nathaniel Bassi may the Lord continue to renew your strength in the name of Jesus let nobody go on the internet or speak anyhow about Nigeria because our case is different 
We are not Tokyo. We are not Iran. We are different. The investment of God in this nation, no devil can erase it. So let nobody say, hey, you see the shash? They are just driving car. They are not. We are not just driving cars. Oh. We are doing Kurila Bashi, Pakasataya, Bogashete, Nebadasa. Inside our car. So don't be deceived by our lipstick. And don't think you can just run us over because of one Allah Kubar. Don't think so. Nigeria is not an Islamic state. Do not be deceived by our jeep and our songs. If you try us, please give me Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse number 22. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 22. Fear ye not me, said the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves therefore toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar. I don't want to speak more than that. But Nigeria is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. Go get your voter's card. And get into politics. Get your voter's card. And get into politics. Because 2019, even the devil will cry in this nation. In the confine of the time that I have tonight... I was shocked when the Lord laid this aspect of life on my heart to share with you in this second session. <laughs> but I want you to know that he knows why. As we look at the dawn of a new day, I want to speak tonight on family matters. Family matters. Five major things are important in your life. God, you, your family, your career and relationships. And the one at the center of it is your family. If the family is intact, it will show in the nation, it will show in the church, it will show everywhere. I didn't, I can't even believe that this is what I'm doing tonight. But I know I had God. I know I had God. So let's go on this journey. Marriage is many things to many people. Because I believe that God will be bringing the dawn of a new day to families in the name of Jesus. Amen. To some people, it is a necessary evil. To some people, it is just a mere social contract. To be run and guided by traditions and superstitious beliefs. To some people, marriage is just an organized forum for child-bearing and child-rearing. In Africa... It is like a formalized slave trade. The woman is like a glorified slave. You can kick her out and get another one at will. And you are free to marry as many as possible. In the Western world, it is like a business. For better, for stay. For worse, for live. That's why you see in the core African village, a man with many wives goes to the farm with his wives. They labor almost equally. Maybe she, some of them are even pregnant or whatever. And while they are returning, the man carries only one useless cutlass. While his wives carry loads and they are sweating. And the man is using the useless cutlass to drive away imaginary flies and greeting people that do not require his greetings. And when they get home, the man sits before a transistor radio with a palm of, you know, with a, with a keg of palm wine while the woman is busy in the kitchen. That's marriage in the African setting. It's the dawn of a new day for you. Yeah. Marriage is neither Western nor African. Marriage is biblical. The family is the gift of God to humanity. It is the gift of God. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how prosperous you are, no matter how blessed you are, you won't sleep in your office except something is wrong 
with you. You won't sleep on the altar. You need to come home. And as you lay your bed, so you lie on it. Marriage is sweet depending on the cutlery you use to eat it. Therefore, it's important for you to take care of that very crucial aspect of your life. And I'll be addressing every human being in this sanctuary to now, whether you are single or whatever you are. Let's go. Marriage is a gift of God. Marriage is a covenant relationship between a mature man and a mature woman. Not a man and a man. Not a woman and a woman. Through which they both seek to give and receive satisfaction and fulfillment of their healthy needs, desires, and expectations. Marriage is a mystery. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 18. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. Verse 19, the way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a sheep in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Ephesians 5, 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. If marriage is a mystery, then it has to be unraveled. Marriage is a ministry to be fulfilled. Marriage is a divine calling. I begin with those of you that are single. Since we're talking about the dawn of a new day. Before you start going into marriage, there are things you need to understand as a single person. Please, enjoy where you are on your way to where you are going. It is not marriage that completes you. If you are an incomplete single person, you will meet and marry an incomplete single person and you will have an incomplete marriage. So get it right. It is better to be the right person in marriage because water will always find its level. You want to marry a Jim Jim brother? Are you a Jim Jim sister? God is a businessman and is profit conscious. He will not waste his investments. So start developing yourself as a single person, male and female. There are different wrong reasons why people get married. Number one, I am old enough. If you're going to be married, maturity or age is not considered just based on your chronological age or years you need to be married to be mature in at least four areas of your life number one is spiritual maturity soundly born again in case you're here tonight and you are not yet saved and then you develop a dynamic spiritual walk with the lord i told you i'm going to teach tonight i'm not preaching a dynamic, a very dynamic spiritual life and walk with the Lord. Because battles are real, in case you do not know. Very real. And it takes the strength on the inside to win the battles on the outside. Hmm. My husband says some people are not happy that you are happy. And they want to try anything, including your destiny. But the devil is a liar. You are more than a conqueror. Number two is physical maturity. At 18, what are you looking for? Looking for a boyfriend. Go and write jam and pass. <laughs> and face your life and get something. Something good out of your life. Physical maturity, you must be mature enough. It's not that your husband or your wife introduces you and then we're looking for you on the floor because you are so small. No, not at all. Number three is financial maturity. I am not being materialistic i am just being realistic when you get married you need money at least one of you should have a stable source of income it's important for you because if your wife gives birth to a set of twins for instance you cannot go to the mall and claim none kiri kiri can claim such a person so you need money you must be hard working If you still live in your father's boys' quarters, don't consider marriage. Do not consider marriage. The God lifts your head because it's the dawn of a new day. Don't consider it at all. Don't tell your wife, it's by faith, it's by faith. There's a difference between faith and foolishness. Every woman is security conscious. 
There are five major areas, minimum, in which a man is different from a woman. If I have the time, I'll get into that. A woman is security conscious. If you want to make love to your wife, she wants to be sure the doors are shut. So she says to you, have you locked the door? He said, yes, I have locked it. He said, go and check again. <laughs> and you know a man will do anything under that condition. <laughs> go and check. That's why the woman will say, I want to drink water. The man will say, which one? Is it room temperature? Or... <laughs> Women become commanders in chief when it comes to that area. We're not talking about that tonight. You need to be mature emotionally. If the apron of your emotions is still tied to your parents, then, beloved, you are not a candidate for marriage. Because when trials and troubles come, a minimum of 14 kinds of winds blow against every marriage, whether you are born again or not. Minimum. So you must be sound emotionally. It's very important. I don't have all the time tonight. Wrong reason for marriage, number two, family pressure. Mothers and fathers, stop putting pressure on your children to go get married. Pray for them and let them remain in the will of God. Don't push them to become the second wives in anybody's home. Can I tell you, your marriage relationship may determine whether you will make heaven or not. Because there is no institution in this world where your Christianity is tried like the institution of marriage. When you get married, you move from patience to endurance, from endurance to long suffering. <laughs> marriage. I went for that wedding and look at the souvenir I brought. Stop putting pressure on your children. 37, you are 25. You see, don't push them into trouble. 50 years time, 30 years time, 40 years time, you are no longer here. Don't help your child live his life. No child is sent to you. Children are sent through you. So please, let God be pleased in their lives. Some people get married because they need housekeepers or a housekeeper. This house is always dead. If you just get, if I can just get married now, everywhere will be. So when they go out and the house is not, they are, they are talking to their, what have you been doing in, since? What have you been doing? I hope I can get there. There is a way you speak to your, to your wife as a man. If you want to prosper. <laughs> it's scriptural. I'll show you very soon. There's a way you talk to your wife. If you want to prosper. You have no right to tell me to respect you. Sometimes if you're a married man. Until I have met your wife and maybe your children. And I've listened to them. Because when you listen to a fool for two minutes. You can tell. If your Christianity does not work at home. Don't bother to export it. <laughs> don't bother to export it at all. So let's listen to the people that are closest to you because in marriage you don't you can't pretend anybody can pretend in church bless the lord we bless god we bless jesus but who are you at home it's the dawn of a new day child bearing some women are factory baby factory machines madam i pity you if every year when we come for this conference you are pregnant i really pity you Every year, you have boys, you have girls. The next one will be an hermaphrodite. <laughs> and God forbid, if you kill yourself in the delivery room, your husband, in one year, he will be remarried. He'll be remarried. He will say, I just don't want to be tempted. <laughs> and and uh, Angel Fatai appeared to me and told me to be married. <laughs> Why are you in heaven? So don't kill yourself. Because you are looking for a boy or you are looking for a girl. Which one can you manufacture? Some because of material possessions. The man has a whatever. When I went to his house after choir rehearsal. Hey, don't marry a man because of what he drives. Marry him because of what drives him. What is he living for? As a single lady, 14 brothers proposed marriage to me. 14. My husband was the 14th man. Why did they want to marry me? Because they felt, oh, she's spiritual. I was the most active sister in church. I just love Jesus, just serving him. This mouth has drunk all kinds of waters because of the gospel. So I tell people, don't be deceived by my makeup and my jeans. Oh, my spiritual head is correct. 
Don't be deceived. When my husband, when we got married, hear me and hear me well, on our wedding day, it was the money they put together. You know, people will greet you. Bro, Felix, congratulations. The money, the envelope they were passing, my husband was passing to the best man and he was counting. When it got to 80 naira, he gave it to another brother who ran to the market to buy us mattress. Green color, but they foam. I can't forget. <laughs> so that we could get a mattress to sleep. Today, if we need to open a mattress factory, I don't think we will need to pray more than three minutes. Don't marry a man because of what he drives. Marry him because of what drives him. What is his vision? Because inside his vision is the provision. Don't marry a man because of television. Marry him because of his vision. If a man has a vision, he will put you on television. He will. Most times we don't look at this part. So I believe it's a divine assignment for me to look at it in this conference. We're talking about faith, we're talking about so many things, but a lot of people have issues in their marriages. It's only when they come to church that they are happy. But God, through his prophet, has released that. It is the dawn of a new day for us, and I believe it will be so in your marriages in the name of Jesus. So you don't need to endure, you must enjoy it. There are several reasons. Some marry because of beauty. She's beautiful, he's beautiful. Some traps. I made a mistake and she got pregnant, so we must be married. Who says? Who says? So many things, so many reasons why people get married. But please, I'm talking to the singles. Marriage is the highest level of friendship on earth. Highest level. So marry a person you know and you like very well. See, it doesn't matter. It's spiritual. It doesn't matter. It matters. Love is blind. Marriage is the eye opener. <laughs> when you get home, that is when you will know that it's not all, it's not spiritual 24 7. So close one eye in prayer, open the other one in looking, and look very well. Marry a man that you know and you like. Marry your friend. Number two, marry someone you can associate with on all levels and not be ashamed. Genesis 2, 25, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Number three, marry someone that knows your fault and accepts you just as you are. Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. A true friend is somebody that knows where you stink and yet is faithful. Marry someone, number four, that loves you enough to tell you the truth you don't even want to hear. Hmm. Everybody may clap for you, but there should be somebody that I call your confronter. You can pull you aside and tell you the, the way you throw temper tantrums is killing Someone that can tell you you are rude. One sister, I thank God she left her church. I, I'm still doing Thanksgiving. There's nobody she cannot abuse. One day I put her as I said, Madam, the way you are going, one day you're going to abuse a corpse. The corpse will wake up, slap you and go back. How come that there's nobody you cannot abuse? Very rude. And then you say you are looking for a husband. A man comes to you to propose marriage to you. You look at him and say, hey, if not that, I'm waiting. Me to you, you to Nepal. <laughs> if not that, I'm waiting. What are you carrying that you are miss? What? <laughs> Hallelujah. Marry someone with whom you can be transparent, honest, and vulnerable. You may not be able to write fast because I'm going very fast. Marry someone you can count on in times of crisis. Marry someone whose need you meet and who meets your need. Marry someone that is committed to help you realize God's purpose and potentials for your life. Marry somebody that is there when he has 
reasons not to be there. When being there is sacrificially costly. Look for this. Before you go into marriage. Marry somebody that stands for you and by you in everything. And you can take notes while you are still in courtship. If he prefers his mother to you, a womb belo ko longe. I have a lot to tell you singles, but let me pause. If you are here tonight and you are a widow, the worst part of your life is behind you. Sometimes bad things happen to good people and it's the dawn of a new day for you. So don't sit down and be mourning and mourning and mourning. God has become your husband. And if you are below 60 and you still desire to, be, to remarry, why not? Go ahead and remarry. Don't tell me, ah, when I was marrying my husband, I vowed that I would never marry. You spoke out of pains. And when you're in pain, sometimes you say some things that you do not mean. Now that you have calmed down, you can remarry. Who says you cannot remarry? Yes, you can. Please don't be involved in adultery. It cuts short a man's destiny. Do not be involved in it. Don't say because you are a widow, different men come to your house. No matter the prayers and the graces that may come, it's a dawn of a new day. It's this, if you live in sin, if you just keep your house. Because God cannot be mocked. Holiness is still real. And it is still attainable. If you're a widow, if you need to sell the last dress that you have, make sure if you have kids, send them to school. Because it is the child you nurture that will nourish you tomorrow. Don't be sleeping around. It shows later in life. And Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5 says, Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. God is for you. In case you are divorced or you are separated, you are likely to be judged. Because sometimes people don't know what you are going through until they wear your shoes. Whether you were wrong, or he was wrong, or she was wrong, is not the point. Now, this is reality. If you are separated, you are a widow, you are divorced, you go through four major stages or five. The first one, just like adultery. The first one is shock. I never imagined that this would happen to me. The second one is denial. Is it true? Am I dreaming? The third one is grief. You begin to grieve. Sometimes you are in bed, you are crying and crying. If you are separated, if you are divorced, if you are a widow, or your husband or wife committed adultery, you go through these stages. But we thank God because grief is not the whatever, the last stage. Because from there, you move to healing. And then from there, you move to restoration. God is faithful. It's a cycle. It is. So if you're a widow, you, uh, sorry, you're separated or you're divorced, don't listen to anyone that is judging you. True, there may be some things you did wrong, but that's in your past. And God does not consult your past to determine your future. Your mistake. Who doesn't have a mistake? We all have shadows. All of us, no matter who you are. Don't you notice sometimes when it is prayer, prayer meeting time and pastor is saying, everybody pray. And he's praying, praying. Then the pastor says, tell God, tell God that thing. Even the pastor. <laughs> everybody has something. Everybody. Oh, you've noticed before. <laughs> then I'm a, I'm a real prophet then. <laughs> Everybody, if the person sitting beside you shows you the video of his or her life, you will thank God. If you are a single parent, please hear me and hear me very well. The devil has done his past, his, his worst in your life. Don't poison your children's hearts against your ex-spouse. Maybe you got pregnant when you were in school. Or maybe your marriage, whatever, whatever. But you are raising your kids all by yourself. It's tough. We know. And God is there with you. You too don't be involved in adultery. Please do not. And if, if you need to be remarried, 
locate a Bible believing church, be planted there, and share your situation with your pastor. Hmm. If you are not pastored this end time, you are like a Christmas chicken that is being reared. Battles everywhere. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some. If you are not a part of this some, don't kill this some. Put your head on that some. It is his prerogative. He chose who he will choose. We may be age mates. We are not grace mates. I've told you before. So, know your mates. Know your mates. And you are here, you are, you are a parent of children that have special needs. Say, so why? I wish I had aborted this baby. I wish. It's the dawn of a new day for you. God is still doing great things. And that child will still preach the gospel. Amen. Be there for that child because who knows, one day an angel of the Lord can appear and change his life. Any medical situation the child needs, please be there. Give that child psychological support. Believe in that child. Stand by the child. Who knows? Nobody knows tomorrow. And all shall be well. Amen. If you're here and you're a waiting parent, you're a parent in waiting, that you are the man or the woman. Hear me and hear me very, very clearly. I have an orphanage. While you are waiting, you can adopt a child. You can adopt a child. The government approved our orphanage and we thank God. The first child that we gave up for adoption is now an American citizen. I am so grateful. A few days ago, we gave up another boy. We gave him up for adoption. The, the joy I saw, the lady was in my office two days ago, the joy I saw in the, on the face of this 51-year-old lady. I said, I am truly living. I'm happy. So while you are waiting, walk up to an orphanage, put down your name, go through the due process, and adopt a baby. It is a philanthropic thing. It is a, it is a principle of mercy. As to treat that child well, heaven looks at you and blesses you. I can tell you it works. When my kids were young, all of them are married now, I thank God, with their own kids. Anytime they had any challenge, I'll just go to one corner in my room. I say, God, see the way I treat these children at the orphanage. Lord, remember me. And he hears. He hears. I told you in the morning, God told me this year, you must remember the poor. And some of you are here. While you are waiting, you might want to consider that. You can also go for IVF. And don't give up. God uses both the medical and the miraculous to heal. He's God. Now, somebody will say, is this woman spiritual? Very, very spiritual. <laughs> very. This is the way God led me tonight. And it's, it may be because of one person. It's the dawn of a new day. We want everybody to be happy. We want you to have your joy and carry your own too. By December 31 this year, you will sing for joy. You can do IUI. You can do IVS. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing. Absolutely. Some of you say Panadol. Some of you put, you wear glasses and say, I thank God for healing. What about the glasses on your face? <laughs> if your faith carries it, if your faith carries it, why not? Once you agree, go ahead and do it. There's something about babies. It's a mystery. There's something that they bring into a home. If there's anyone here tonight, may God wipe your tears. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are an in-law here tonight, we are talking about a new dawn. And graces are coming here internationally, locally, nationally. I'm praying for people. You are blessed. You will go forward. Anybody that is against you, we are using our head to collect, <laughs> to collect uh, correct things. Oh. So if you are an in-law here, don't trouble any marriage. Because you don't know when that lady jumped and said, Amen! Anybody that is troubling your marriage, may God finish them. Amen! So, if you are an in-law, be careful. Be very careful. Some of you have heard me say this before. I used to have a sister-in-law that was very bad. Thank God she's born again now. When our marriage was very young, one day she came home to beat me up. Ah! Uh -uh. It's as serious as this. And my husband stood up to her. After she left, I told my husband, till I see Jesus, I will honor you. My husband faced her. 
She said, what rubbish is this? And my husband is a, is a great, perfect gentleman. Solid. He was... Uh, hey. The woman turned to her and said, ah, you want to beat me? She said, if it's necessary. <laughs> if you overstep your boundaries. This is my marriage. Uh, and I will come in between them. He said, okay, darling, stop it. Mommy, stop it. Then I will go out. This is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> Then I will come back again. Call me an hypocrite. If you were there, what would you have done? And I'll come back again. Oh, she told, is enough. My father in law was a king at that time. After the whatever, my sister in law went to the village and said to Kabiesi, Hey, if not for Mama Dotu, Felix would have beaten me up today. So when I, when I got to the village, Baba told me, I said, ah, Yes, sir. <laughs> Welcome in Lenny, sir. I have home training, sir. That's why. If you are an in law, it's the turn of a new deal. Don't trouble marriages. Mama, in case you are here tonight or you are watching me online, stop troubling your children's marriages. It's the turn of a new day. Your, your son. And his wife are watching CNN. And when you left your room, because you went to do a mugo, you went to take care of babies for them. When you left your room and you got outside, you noticed that the wife was placing her head on August's chest. You see that you reverse? <laughs> or you sit down and face CNN? <laughs> or you go back to your whole husband's house? Is there a domain? It's their kingdom. It's not that you'll be troubling them and be flipping and be changing and be, and be, and be troubling the marriage. Ah, don't trouble marriages, so. The one you did last was the last. Don't trouble marriages again. I don't know if you sisters in law. All you know how to do is to talk, 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 talk and tear your brother's wife. Life is, is governed by principles. Continue to sow it. He's waiting for you. And that girl cannot say anything. And you, brother, too, you need to wake up and become a man. How can your junior brother, who has three and a half credits in WAEC, <laughs> physical education, Igbo language, religious knowledge, and Yoruba, and your wife is watching maybe African magic or something, and the boy says, I want to watch, I want to watch Baba one day. And you two, you are saying, leave him so that he will not go to the village. Uncle, you are weak. You are weak. Wake up and be a man. I'm talking to somebody. And madam, you two, that every time your in-laws come, you must squeeze your face like an amoeba. I pity you. Because if your mother-in-law did not take care of that man, if she did not sell kerosene or sell pap, your husband wouldn't have been able to attend University of Lagos. So please, snatch mama from your husband. She may be a devil, it doesn't matter. You're in charge. You're more than a conqueror. I was telling you about my mother-in-law that died at 110, blessing me. You think she did not offend me? I just chose to overlook it. Because I know that one day, I will also be a mother-in-law like I am today. I have two sons. Don't sow it if you don't want to reap it. No matter your Christian level. Charisma without character is caricature. Thank you. You can preach. You can sing. Thank you. You can be in protocol. You can be whatever. Ah, this girl is fine. Are you married? <laughs> My God. Your husband is very blessed. You will go well in Jesus' name. Sometimes you don't understand this high heel. We are just pretending. <laughs> we have pain. We are just pretending. I'm praying in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. As you are laughing, I hope you are getting blessed. It's the dawn of a new day for you. I want to quickly wrap it, wrap it up by speaking to the married few more minutes just give me a few more minutes to the married what i'm sharing with you tonight it can take me three days to share it i had 
another message. Day that you start the lectures and the exams. Because marriage is a school. And marriage is the only institution where you collect a certificate on matriculation day. <laughs> certificate on matriculation day. In case you do not know, what they give you that day is not actually a certificate. It's a letter of appointment. <laughs> Welcome to hard work. Because every good marriage is hard work. It is the truth. And every marriage goes through seven stages before it breaks. I'll mention them very soon, those stages. You need to make sure that your marriage, your family life is correct and intact. Hmm. In marriage, you are just to blend. Therefore, it's important for you to consult God before you get married. I was showing Pastor Tony my notes when Pastor Tony started preaching. Because my foundational text for what I'm about to say is Luke chapter 8, the parable of the sower. Four kinds of marriages is here. So I won't read that scripture again because Pastor Tony already read it. Mine is not Matthew 13, mine is Luke chapter 8 from verse 4. So the first kind of marriage is the wayside marriage. The wayside. So the seed was sown and it fell on the wayside. And the birds of the air devoured it. It was trodden down. That's how the Bible puts it. It fell by the wayside. So it wasn't actually planted. It fell. Maybe it just dropped from the sower's bag. It fell by the wayside and it was trodden down. And the remaining that didn't enter the soil, the box of the air devoured it. Devoured. That's what the Bible says in Luke chapter 8. What are the characteristics of such a marriage? Careless handling. You carry every aspect of your life with so much passion and all that. And then you drag your marriage on the floor, your family life on the floor. You don't pay attention. Some of you, you walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. No holiday with just you and your wife. Since you got married, when last did you check in just with your wife into an hotel? Just for two nights. Look for someone to babysit for you. When last did you go to the kitchen as an African man? And while your wife is peeling this, you are peeling that. With joy. When last? It's the dawn of a new day. When last did you open the car door for your wife? When last did you buy your wife a bra? When last did you come home from work as tired as you are? With a rose or a bouquet in your hand. And your wife opens and says, just to say I love you. It's the dawn of a new day. When last did you do that? You can pray in tongues for three hours. You can sing. You can preach. You are in the ushering department. You are this and that. But your wife is in pain. Pain. Everybody looks at you in church. Fantastic man. But your children are unhappy. And they don't want to serve your God. They don't want to serve your God. When last did you create time consciously for your family? Once you are coming home because you are the lion of the tribe of your family. <laughs> Everybody runs. Everybody runs. Change the channel. Change the channel. That is here. Change the channel. In case you do not know, I don't have the time. You and your child or children, you have only three phases in life. Only three. First phase, you are in charge. Shut up. Sit down. Yes, daddy. Second phase. He's in charge of his life, and you are in charge of your life. Hello, Dad. I'm in Germany. Hey, I come. You didn't tell me. Oh, well, how can Shelly and on? How many of you called home to take permission before you came to church today? Because you are in charge of your life. 
the last phase, the last season. That child is in charge of his life and your life. I want Pam Dedia. Mama, we, nobody can cook Pam Dedia here. I need to do. He said, it's rice we eat. Okay. Oh, okay. hospital mama we have not collected our salary in the last seven months so you have to go to general hospital they even before you finish yourself they have carried you and dumped you in the car you better use the first season very well because those children will remember his wife will remember his children will remember because they will have told stories about you everything is beaten 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 everything is shut up shut up shut up your child says, I don't want to go to school today. Will you, will you, will you, will you, will you? You're almost having a partition because of, will you shut up? <laughs> One man died in Ondo State. His children removed all the car keys, all the house keys. They put it in a bunch and put it on his chest in the casket. Daddy, you forgot your keys. It's the dawn of a new deal. And this is what God laid on my heart. Take life easy. Careless handling. Everyone is on his own. Some of you, you are married, but you have separate rooms. Madam's bedroom, uncle's bedroom. What for? You say, um, you see, I don't, I don't know, and I don't want to be disturbed. When do, were you not the one that impregnated her? Some of you are saying, in fact, my wife, her breast, eh? her breast is just, is it not you and your children that suck the breasts? You want to send that back to your father's house now? Repackage her. Repackage the breasts. Am I still spiritual? Every woman. Repackage your own. Rebrand your own. Rebrand her. When a woman is 35, she's already feeling old. I told you on Sunday, next Sunday, or this Sunday, I'll be 55. And I was telling my husband, I feel so old. He said, no, you are still my girlfriend. He doesn't know what that is saying to me. I'm still the girlfriend. I'm still the girlfriend. Because a woman is affected by what she hears. When you meet a woman, her daughter say, you are beautiful. She's thinking. <laughs> you tell a man his answer, I say, thank you. Bless you. <laughs> Does he care? Did he ask you for any compliments? Oh, my time is up. Jesus. After tonight. Okay. Thank you. I feel honored. Just a few more minutes. After this conference, go back and start sleeping in the same room. Let him snore. It doesn't matter. Who doesn't snore? It depends on who sleeps first. <laughs> who doesn't snore? truth be told that the devil be put to shame ask your neighbor don't you snore how will you even know sir hallelujah when you sleep when you handle your marriage in that way communication is next to zero and the devil can come in look at the second one the rocky one the one that was built on the rock the Bible says it sprang up but it lacked moisture so it withered it withered because it's not nurtured. Marriage is like a plant. You have to keep nurturing it, pouring water. 34 years of marriage. I can still tell you this. You keep nurturing. When my husband is not, in, he just came in from England yesterday. On the phone, we can speak 50 times a day. You won't believe me. Five zero. Just to keep the communication line on. Hello, darling. I'm going to the bathroom. Okay. Love you. Bye. <laughs> That's how we run our relationship. Is he monitoring me? No. He's my friend. Because some of you, the phone will ring. You won't know that your wife is in the bathroom. And they say, hey, she didn't pick. Okay. And the devil is telling you stories. So let me Kuku tell you, I'm going to the bathroom. How many minutes? How, how much would that cost? Communication. Invest into your marriage. Talk. Laugh. Go to see the movies. Together. 
Don't be so spiritual that your head and everything is in this in the sky. Book of Zephaniah, book of Habakkuk every day. Communicate. As a woman, once in a while, tiptoe, put a little fish in your mouth. Tiptoe while your husband is watching Arsenal and Chelsea. Up gunners. Back and sit down. <laughs> just, just tickle your husband. You know, sometimes I just, I just walk like that. And I just tickle my husband. You know, he does like this. I say, you are not a virgin. <laughs> just to make him laugh. Some of you. It is this social media. You wake up in the morning. Phone is taking over God. Self. Let me just check. Instagram. Who posted? Nathaniel Basi. Okay, okay. That's okay. <laughs> So God first talk to your husband or wife some of you need deliverance from that thing you can be together for one hour husband and wife and you won't say a word you are genuine reasons so you have to consciously work on this it's very important the one that fell on the rock it's with us some marriages are on, on a rock. That's why the Bible calls it a rock, not the rock. Because the rock is Christ. A rock of education. A rock of family background. A rock of whatever. Spirituality. It's with us. Don't build your marriage on that. And please, the Bible talks about devourers. One problem to another. Sickness. This one, that one. By Zechariah chapter 1 tells us. The third one is the, the, the thorny marriage. No peace in that home. Thorns. Choke it. Problems that grow with marriages. External influence. Demonic incursion. Misunderstandings. A couple very, very happy when they were in Nigeria. Be sure it is God that is leading you to relocate. Because some of us in this Nigeria, we will prosper. I know you both will be carrying our bag when we go there. They relocated to Canada happily married people and the woman decided to surprise the man she changed the city the man came and said why did you change the city 22 year old marriage broke as i speak now demonic incursion both of you must always meet in god this is the altar of god no liar will go to heaven my husband and i pray every day twice a day every day one minute one hour Two hours, we pray together every day. Since we got married 34 years ago. If he's not home, we pray on the phone. It will be just for just a minute. When we wake up, we pray together. Before we sleep, we pray together. Our nest is empty now, so the kids are gone. Before we do it, family altar. Because a time comes when sex is not the only thing now in the marriage. You are aging. Generator team pack up. So, <laughs> is the truth. When I get married, there's sex. After some time, I swear. Age will tell you. It's the truth. It's the reality. But what will keep you? God. 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 He cannot be replaced. And of course, you know, the last one is the good marriage. The God factor. No comparison. Labor over your marriage. I close by saying just five things that most women want in a man a man she can look up to a woman was created to look up that's the way we, we were wired that's the way we are wired it's not just money but leadership your wife wants to look up to you she wants to defer to you don't be an empty head please invest into yourself be strong be somebody that a woman can look up to Number two, she wants affirmation. Affirm her. Validate your wife. A couple went for a program like this and the lady sang. Then they got into the car and the man was saying, ah, that girl sings. Ha. And the wife is also a singer. Ah, that girl. Ha, that girl. So the woman turned to him and said, will you go and marry her? You are full of commendation outside and condemnation in the house. You can't compliment your wife. But when you see any woman, wow, 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 wow. You see lust all over your face. Wow, you are so beautiful. Ah, 
madam, did your husband tell you, excuse me, uncle, shut up and turn to your wife. And compliment her, validate her, affirm her. Let her know she's still beautiful. She's still, she's, she's still you know, the sugar in your tea. Let her feel you. Hug her. It's not just sexual hugs. Hug her. Let her. Particularly if you are someone that is always among very beautiful people. You are very, you know, you are the sinusure of people. Stop passwording your, your whatever name. You, you want to pick your call. You run to the bathroom. Something is wrong with your destiny. <laughs> You must run to go and pick your call when your wife is there. Something is wrong, I'm telling you. A woman wants a friend, not a boss. And the woman wants a decent man, not a flirt. If you look at if you, beg your pardon, if you look at Proverbs chapter 5, I'm a Yoruba lady, and what they call adultery or fornication in my language is agbere. And it won't buy it. Collector of profits. <laughs> if you shall, beg your pardon, Proverbs tells us by reason of adultery, a man is reduced to a piece of bread. Wound and dishonor shall he get, and his disgrace, his shame shall not be wiped away. There's nothing you are looking for in any woman that is not in your wife. And women, excuse me, rebrand, get your jeans. Get your spaghetti. Look good. All this a on your face, just pile down on your face is enough. A man is attracted by what he sees. Take care of yourself. And all this having sex and your husband must be on the top every time. What is wrong with you? The Bible says that shall be above only. I need to close. Oh, I have to close. You have, as a woman, you have a nightwear. And it's the one your grandmother put in her will. The one you inherited. You now expect your husband not to be looking and committing the sin of lucre. Let there be newness in your marriage. Please. First Timothy 5.8 tells us, Men, if you don't want your prayers to be hindered, First Peter 3, 7, that's it. Two things that a woman wants, I, I have 10, but I'm closing. Two things that men want in a woman. A woman that respects him publicly and privately. An intelligent woman that can contribute to his life. I wanted to tell you the seven stages, but please, you know, let's... Um, Let's leave that for some other time. If there's any demon trying to afflict your marital destiny, today we curse it in the name of Jesus. When the servant of God releases a theme for a conference, the spirit of the theme flows in the air. No matter what you have been through, from this hour, it is a new day for you. Whoever says you will not be married, you will be married and they will serve as ushers at your wedding whoever says you cannot carry your child by mistake you will be pregnant somehow somehow this year will end for you on the note of celebration if you believe it jump up and shout one big hallelujah give the lord a big hand a big hand a big hand a big hand tell your neighbor it's a new day for me Everybody stand wherever you are. Wait for the grace to avoid disgrace.